Welcome to another edition of Mailbag. Remember, these are comments and questions that you guys leave on my channel that I do my humble best to try and answer, offer comment, or just throw out to the wider community for somebody out there to help you out. Um, as with uh, a number of recent mailbags, I'm doing one header and then the mailbags will follow. So if you sort of read the next mailbag and it looks the same as this, that's the reason why. But before we get going, we must address the normal parish notices, which are, if you haven't subscribed to the channel and you like uh, videos about this sort of stuff, this sort of stuff, and this sort of stuff, you need to hit the subscribe icon. Save time, hit the bell icon as well, you'll be notified when videos hit the channel. If you like the contents of this video, please give it a thumbs up, it really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And also, I highly encourage you to leave comments down below. I do read them, I respond to every single comment, and sometimes I even use those comments as subject of videos that I will film in the future. And finally, down there is the TMTG community. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, which I think is a real bargain, you can support the uh, production of videos on the channel. Uh, down there are also the Instagram and Facebook tags where other stuff related to the channel will appear. But now, back to the video. And now, of course, I can do the, the joke that it's all gone a bit D-flat. Um, <laughs> the next one comes from Sean Curran, and I don't have written down... Uh, the video that actually this comment relates to, but Sean writes, I love the idea of a dedicated VST rack gear. However, we can run two commodity MacBooks available at every Apple and Best Buy store. Dedicated, yes, proprietary and specialized hardware platform, maybe not. I think this might be in response to a Sea Lake Audio uh, video. Anyway, of course, the concept of a, uh, a dedicated VST um, was what the Muse receptor was all about. And currently Sea Lake Audio Station is all about. So the, both these products are sort of aiming at the same, the same market space. Uh, dedicated hardware configured to run VSTs. Um, I saw another question recently that um, you can run limitless VSTs. Of course, this is rubbish. Each VST will consume a percentage of CPU and RAM, so even the most powerful laptops and desktops will have a capacity issue. As you know, I'm not a fan. I really am not a fan of VSTs. I don't get along with them particularly well. I prefer having a piece of hardware in front of me. Um, but I'm not a fan of VSTs, but I did think about borrowing a server and trying to run a suite on, on this hardware to see how it performed and then I realized that the server OS is optimized for background tasks, uh, e.g. running databases and not foreground tasks, which would be typically how a VST would function. And actually, that's quite a, a critical piece here because the most powerful computers tend to be server-side server computing, not client-side computing. So, um, and it's the way that the operating system is configured for server, server operating and client operating. Uh, and before the Linux branch of the fan club chime in, I do not know about, enough about ver various, variant, various Linux derivatives to get going on this configuration. I've got to be honest, I, I, we use Red Hat Linux at home, at work, sorry, and uh, I can run various commands on it, but I can't, I wouldn't have the, the skill set to try and do this. Um, the other thing is that most VSTs are, of course, written for a Mac variant of Linux and not something like Ubuntu or Red Hat or Sys or something else. Um, so uh, the problem, and this was the problem that, that Muse kind of ran into, to be honest, was that Muse were trying to, uh, trying to get VSTs to run on a Linux kernel. And the only way they could do it was either they had to tin it, tinker with the VST to make it run or well, they had to get the software house to tinker with the VST to make it run. And because Muse don't exist anymore and the software houses only want to support Mac and Windows, very few of them support Linux variants. 
it actually sort of kind of makes the experiment very difficult to get out to to get into but i love the concept i really do think and i've, I've said this many many times on the channel the whole concept of this vst band in a box which is what sea lake audio have been going down is such a great concept for a gigging touring band And the next one didn't actually come off of a um, off the channel. It was actually sent to me via Instagram against one of the videos that was posted, which happened to be the how to use the Yamaha DX7 restore cartridge. Uh, and it comes from DX Log and X. Um, and basically they write, uh, cartridge is technically faster as you say, but they're not cheap. Alternatively, the cost of a MIDI USB cable, you can simply load the sysx files which are free and widely available online cartridge is nice to have as a collector's item though um and i, I completely agree with everything you've said um but thanks for the comment and uh, while you're perfectly correct uh if you have a dx7 connected to a computer for the price of a mini cable and, in, and, and the interface this is a brilliant solution and you know just off shot i go and grab my MIDI interface. So I have a industrial studio interface, which is what I use when the studio is up and running and fully patched. Um, but if I am sending SysX backwards and forwards, then that is the interface that I use. It's just a MIDI sport two in, two out. Okay, and that for me does a really simple job because it effectively isolates the synth. So you know that all the traffic going to and from the synth is coming to and from the synth. You don't have to start doing patching and routing on the um, uh, buh, 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 the, the the studio panel, which is easy enough to do, but it's just, if, to, for one reason or another, I'm not gonna go into it, this is easier. Okay, there's lots of reasons why that is simpler. Um, but that my per, it's my personal preference that I've always bought the cartridges. Um, I've pretty much got a restore cartridge for every old synth I have, if it exists, um, purely on the basis that it is the fastest way to get the synth back to back to factory. And then once you put it back to factory, it's easy then to sort of remodify things back to where you want to go. Um, I always have a personal preference of going back to factory when I acquire a piece of equipment because you just don't know what the person who had it before you has changed in terms of settings. Um, and I've had numerous instances where I've had a piece of equipment and I can't get it to do what I want it to do. It's because somebody has changed the setting at some point in the past um, that just stops you doing what you need to do. So, um, but it is a personal preference. The way I have my studio set up, uh, I go for cartridge first and then if I have to, I then go for SysX. Um, and that's actually one of the reasons why this D70 is sitting in front of me. I'm, I've actually been recording um, the SysX steps for doing factory restore on this, which is something that seems to be um, very difficult to do um, because it's not particularly well documented. Anyway, 